Adam Cole revealed on AEW Dynamite this week that he has sustained a broken ankle and will require surgery. But how legitimate is the injury? Some backstage are suggesting it might not be real. Details on what the latest is regarding his broken ankle and if indeed it is a big work. Speaking of Dynamite, we have the ratings for this week's edition on TBS heading into Wrestle Dream on Sunday. LA Knight, we've got an update on his status and if he'll be at SmackDown tonight, possibly factoring in to John Cena's fast lane plans. And Jim Ross says that AEW Collision is Brian Danielson's show. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. And let's start off talking about Adam Cole, his broken ankle, and maybe some of the speculation surrounding the legitimacy of his injury. If it's a big storyline, if it's a work, it's pro wrestling after all, so there's always room to doubt if anything is legitimate. Now, Adam Cole has said that he had to have surgery and will need surgery on his broken ankle. However, many are still doubting if indeed he is actually injured. According to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, due to the nature of professional wrestling, many have questioned if Adam Cole's injury was legitimate. DPW announcing his match against Chris Danger following the injury. They'd later say the match was off due to the injury. And of course, the cliffhanger that closed AEW Dynamite this past Wednesday with the masked men showing up at the end of Dynamite to attack Jay White, leading to some to suspect that indeed he's not injured or he might be not injured in the you know, the severe way that as is being portrayed on AW television and that it's all one big work. And actually he is the man under the mask, under MGF's devil mask at the end of AW Dynamite attacking Jay White. Now, according to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, the word within All Elite Wrestling is that Adam Cole is legitimately scheduled for surgery and will be out for, of action for quite some time. When seen, Adam Cole was wrapped and had crutches and required help traveling. So if for some reason he wasn't hurt, everyone else isn't in on it. Or at the very least, they're working the backstage crew and the backstage workers as well. So, of course, we wish him a speedy recovery if indeed he is injured. Now, the hope within the AW roster was that Adam Cole had simply sustained an ankle sprain, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Adam Cole went to the hospital after the September 20 AEW Dynamite Grand Slam tapings at Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens, New York, and was seen on crutches shortly thereafter. Now, Fightful do stress that they've not been told if AEW plans on keeping Adam Cole involved via vignettes or if he's going to be factored into upcoming shows, but Fightful have been told to, quote, not expect him in a live capacity on upcoming Dynamite or Collision, so that's not to suggest that maybe he might not be involved in these vignettes, possibly filmed at another location with MJF, or possibly they could do them virtually. There are ways kind of around it, but don't expect him to be on live episodes of AEW Dynamite or Collision. So the suggestion certainly is that this is a legitimate injury. At least that's what's being portrayed backstage. It wouldn't be the first time that the boys and the girls in the back would have been worked, considering that everything gets leaked out of AEW anyway. So that's kind of the latest situation when it comes to Adam Cole. But what are your thoughts on the Adam Cole injury? Do you believe it true to be true? Do you buy that indeed he is injured? Is it a case of him having a sprain and AEW trying to make the most of the situation and working the dirt sheets, working the people in the back, working everybody to a big reveal, possibly this coming Sunday at Wrestle Dream? Or do you believe legitimately that Adam Cole is injured and requires surgery and is going to be on the shelf for a prolonged period of time? What are your thoughts on this? What are your feelings on this? Let me know your thoughts, as always, in the comments section below. Now, speaking of Dynamite this week, we've got the ratings for the show, and they're not that great going into Wrestle Dream this Sunday in Seattle. The September 27th episode of AW Dynamite didn't see the best ratings ahead of its Wrestle Dream pay per view on Sunday, October 1st. WrestleNomics is reporting that Dynamite was watched by 855,000 total viewers, which is the lowest total viewership since August 9. This week's episode also had its lowest 18 to 49 key demographic rating since June 28, 365. 5,000 viewers with a 0.28 18 to 49 rating. Overall, Dynamite was ranked third in cable originals, losing to the second Republican presidential debate and the Fox News show Hannity. 
Going further in depth, viewership was close to a million during the AW World Champion MJF's segment with Bullet Club Gold leader Jay White, who confronted the champion. Following that segment, quarters uh, between quarters five and six, it dropped to a staggering 130,000 viewers, comparing the numbers to the September 20 episode, which saw a total viewership of 984,000 viewers. It's down 13% double digits, while in the key demographic, it was down 22% from last week as well. In the Wrestle Dream Go Home edition of Dynamite, Ray Phoenix successfully defended his AEW International Championship against Jeff Jarrett, while the Young Bucks' Nick Jackson earned himself a future shot at Phoenix's title by defeating Brian Cage and Claudio Castagnoli. There was also a Wrestle Dream contract signing between Hangman Adam Page and Swerve Strickland, which ended with the two brawling in the ring before security broke them up. Of course, the show ended with a man wearing a devil mask that looked like MGF's uh, devil mask, who turned to the camera and... Uh, just after four men had attacked Switchblade Jay White backstage. Of course, if we get any more information on that as to who the mystery person is, we'll let you know. I'm thinking of doing a sort of rundown of the suspects later on today. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know and we can do it later for you either today or tomorrow prior to WrestleStream and prior to AEW Collision. What are your thoughts on the ratings for AEW Dynamite this week? What do you think this means heading into WrestleStream? Do you think it means anything or not that much? Or are we just back into the territory where Dynamite seems to be at this point, which is between 800 and 900,000 viewers and not getting close to that 1 million viewer mark? Let me know your thoughts about that. Now, LA Knight was absent from last week's episode of SmackDown due to testing positive for COVID-19. But LA Knight's absence from WWE programming is coming to an end just after one week. According to PW Insider, Knight will be at tonight's SmackDown in Sacramento, California after testing positive for COVID-19 and being, and being sent home from the September 22 episode of The Blue Brand. Knight was reportedly supposed to be in the show's closing segment, which involved John Cena being attacked by the Bloodline, Solo Sokoa and Jimmy Uso. Knight was set to run out to save Cena, likely setting up a tag team match against Sokoa and Uso at the Fastlane Premium Live event. But instead, no one was there to help the, I guess, beaten down former WWE champion. Before the closing segment, WWE official Adam Pearce had confirmed that Cena and AJ Styles would be facing Sokoa and Uso at Fastlane, but Styles was later attacked backstage. It's still possible that Knight could be tagging with Cena since the premium live event isn't till October 7, giving WWE plenty of time to set it up with Knight on his way back this week. It's safe to say that the 40-year-old Knight is finally getting his WWE career moment as he's been getting massive crowd reactions and recently won a feud with The Miz that started after Knight became the Slim Jim Battle Royale winner at SummerSlam this past August. At Payback, Knight defeated Miz with Cena as the special guest referee, leading to the initial moment of respect between the two, which seemingly will continue with them being tag team partners at Fastlane. Of course, we get any more details on Knight's status for tonight, we'll let you know. But as of right now, he is set to return and seemingly set to slot in as John Cena's tag team partner. Finally, AEW Collision, now that CM Punk has been fired, has become the Brian Danielson show and an AEW commentator has actually confirmed this himself. With AEW Collision running on Saturdays, according to Jim Ross at the least, the show is very much influenced by Brian Danielson, both in a literal leadership role as well as a general overall tone that is a breath of fresh air. JR described his uh, thoughts on Danielson's current AEW role. Describing Brian Danielson, JR said on his Grilling JR podcast, quote, he's probably the most valuable valuable player in AEW right now, at least in my opinion, not that we don't have other MVPs. He's really taking up a huge role, a leadership role, and that's why I'm so blessed to be on Collision. That's Brian Danielson's show. It, and it's great because he brings maturity and ideas and spirit to core. He is a very, very important to everything we do on Saturday night, especially Brian is really one of the best. I don't know who's a better worker in the world than Brian Danielson right now. We're lucky to have him and I love him to be around. We talk every Saturday. We talked about this or that or this idea or that idea. It's just really refreshing. It's a breath of fresh air to say the least. Now this Saturday night will certainly be set to be the Brian Danielson show as the event rolls into his home state of Washington to uh, Seattle's Climate Pledge Arena. Of course, Brian Danielson is set to face Zack Sabre Jr. at AEW Wrestle Dream on Sunday. October 1st. So what are your thoughts on Brian Danielson's version of AW Collision in comparison to CM Punk's version of AW Collision? Is there much difference? Do you like it? Do you not like it? How do you compare it? Let me know your thoughts about that as well. But there you go, guys. This is the latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll speak to you again very, very soon. 
Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.